Welcome to the Processing System Highlights training video for the Zinc 7000 All Programmable SoC. In this training, we will take a deeper look at the Zinc Processing System by first taking a look at the application processor unit that holds the dual core ARM Cortex A9. We'll then detail the built in memory controller and peripherals that are part of the processing system. And lastly, look at how it connects to the rest of the system and particularly to the programmable logic. As you have seen in the hardware architecture introduction, the processing system of the Zinc 7000 devices is a complete system that contains all that is needed to run most of the existing operating system out of the box without requiring any programmable logic design to be done. It is a processor-centric approach, which means that at power on, the processor boots first and decide what happens with the programmable logic. That basically means that you can connect it to your standard software development tools right at power on and get your software development ongoing prior to the hardware being designed. Now let's take a look at the key elements of this processing system and let's start with the application processor unit. At the heart of it, you will find two ARM Cortex-A9 with their own L1 cache. This dual processor approach supports various software implementation, allowing you to use a single operating system running in SMP mode, use a couple of operating system in AMP mode, use one operating system on one core and a bare metal application on the other, or simply use a single core if you choose to do so. Each of these cores have their own NEON engine to accelerate multimedia application and also their own vector floating point which supports single and dual precision. In order to maintain the cache currency between these two cores, you have a snoop control unit that is available and connected to both cores. It is also connected to a shared unified level 2 cache of 512 kilobytes. And you also have a 256 kilobyte of on-chip memory. And there are a couple of things that are important to note about this memory. Compared to similar traditional approaches, we decided to increase the size of the OCM and also decided to connect it directly to the Snoop control unit, instead of making it a level 3 memory connected after the L2 cache. There are several reasons why we decided to do that, and one of them is the possibility to run a complete real-time operating system dedicated to a single processor and maximize its performance by avoiding cache miss cycles. To complete the APU, you also have all the standard other peripherals, such as DMA, interrupt controllers, debug, and many others. Now, to give the possibility to the APU to operate and boot on its own at power up, we have added two memory controllers. First of all, a static memory controller which supports NAND flash. It also supports traditional no flash, but also quad SPI if you're looking for faster boot time. But also a dynamic memory controller which takes memory requests from the APU, the programmable logic and the various peripherals via DMA through the central interconnect. The dynamic memory controller supports DDR2 and low power DDR2 at up to 800 megabits per second and also DDR3 at up to 1333 megabits per second. In order to be able to run most of the operating systems, we have added standard peripherals to cover the largest set of peripherals for the key application that Zinc is targeting. We have namely two USB 2.0 on the go, two gigabit Ethernet and two SDIO controllers. All these peripherals have their own built-in DMA. But we also have two CAN 2.0B interfaces, mainly for automotive and industrial application, and also SPI, I2C, UART, 32-bit GPIOs. All those are connected to the multiplexed I.O. But if you do the math, you may realize that 54 I.O.s is not sufficient for an application that would require all these peripherals to be used. For that, we have the extended MIO interface, which offers a bridge to the programmable logic and enables the peripherals to connect to the select I.O. from the programmable logic. Now, with such a powerful system combining high performance application processor, memory controller, peripherals, and especially programmable logic, 
you need a robust interconnect to maximize the data transfers in the most efficient non-blocking way. This represents the system interconnect at a relatively high level. The processor obviously has its own interconnect to the external dynamic memory controller through the level 2 cache. But also connected to the DDR controller is a programmable logic switch, which takes up to four 64-bit inputs coming from the programmable logic and also offers direct connection to the APU on-chip memory. Now, also coming from the programmable logic is the accelerator currency port, which does not go through the central interconnect. The reason we have departed from the traditional approach on this is because the ACP is mostly used by our customers to build accelerators into the programmable logic. And for that, you need the lowest latency. So going through the switch would be a waste of valuable cycles for those accelerators. The central interconnects takes the connection with all the major components of the system, allowing the APU as well as the programmable logic to access various resources like static memory interface peripherals. It offers two 32-bit master and two 32-bit slave interface from the programmable logic standpoint to offer the maximum flexibility for the design. All in all, the Zinc 7000 devices offer a full-featured application class processor that can run any kind of operating system from power up without requiring any programmable logic block to be implementing. This allows software developers to start designing with their Zinc board and favorite software tools from day one. For additional peripheral and accelerators, the system designers can rely on a robust high-performance interconnect architecture, which offers high level of performance in transferring data back and forth between the processing system and the programmable logic at power consumption levels that are order of magnitude smaller than what a traditional two-chip solution would offer. Thank you for watching. For more detail on the programmable logic, please watch the programmable logic highlight video or visit us on xilinx.com/sync.